Today, AMD is launching the newest member of their Arduino 2 family, the RX 6600. The 6600 is a direct competitor to Nvidia's RTX 3060, coming in at the exact same MSRP of 329 US dollars. But does it have the performance to justify the asking price? Let's find out. If you're in need of a Windows key, then today's sponsor, ucdkeys.com, has a great deal for you. UCD Keys is offering Windows 10 keys for less than $15. I use these keys myself, the service works great, and the keys work globally. These keys also work with Windows 11 if your computer meets Microsoft's requirements. There are also Office Pro keys, and if you use the discount code C30 at checkout, you'll get an additional 30% discount on your order. Check out the links in the video description. The model of the 6600 I have for review is the small form factor Sapphire Pulse, which could be a great option for those looking to put together an SFF build or for those looking for a low wattage quiet card. At $329, it's aimed primarily at 1080p gaming, but we will look at 1440p as well. The 6600 is based on the same 237mm square die as its sibling, the 6600 XT, which I reviewed recently, but features only 28 compute units instead of 32, less stream processors, and lower clocks that max out at 2491 MHz. It does have the same 32 MB of Infinity Cache, and we'll see if that can compensate for the paltry 128-bit memory interface, especially at higher resolutions. The good news here is that the con has a board power of only 132 watts, requiring a single 8-pin connector, although that's up to AIPs to configure. In the case of the Pulse, it seems to sip a max of 100 watts, which is fantastic for the performance it offers. This model has three DisplayPort 1.4 outputs with DSC and one HDMI 2.1 port. As far as temperatures are concerned, this particular model maxed up at 76 degrees Celsius under full load, with the fan spinning at a notable but bearable 1679 RPM. There is a zero RPM mode enabled by default in Radiant software, which means the card operates silently at 51 degrees while idling. Moving on to performance, in Firestrike Ultra, the 6600 gets 5,415 points stock, which is slightly ahead of the competing RTX 3060, and overclocked, I managed to get it to match the last gen's 5700. In Time Spy, the 6600 stock performs significantly worse than the 3060, but overclocking it seems to get it about on par with Nvidia's card. You should note that in actual games, overclocking had a negligible impact though, around 2 or 3 extra FPS on average at best. We know that RDNA 2 GPUs aren't great at ray tracing, and the 6600 does appallingly in Port Royal, so I wouldn't bother with ray tracing on this GPU, not that you'll be missing out on much. Moving on to games, we start with the recently launched Far Cry 6. At 1080p, the 6600 is just a few frames behind the 3060, which is what you'd expect given the similar suggested price point, but still not an auspicious start for the new RDNA 2 GPU. The VRAM was far from maxing out here, so the limitation was somewhere else. At 1440p, the 6600 trails the 3060 by a similar margin, but at 68 FPS still delivers a solid experience with ultra settings and HD textures turned on. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 1080p, the 6600 is basically on another tier compared to the 3060 which is to be expected in this AMD sponsored title where AMD GPUs typically perform very well. Here the 6600 is basically matching the more expensive 3060 Ti. At 1440p, the card's bandwidth limitations seem to come into play and the 3060 and 6600 are basically tied. Still, this is ultra settings so if you turned down a few settings you'd get a constant 60fps plus in this title with the 6600 at 1440p. Moving on to Watch Dogs Legion, an Nvidia sponsored title, the 6600 trails the 3060 by 4 FPS at 1080p, still managing to deliver an average of 60 FPS though. At 1440p, the experience is not great, with 41 FPS average and the 1% lows dropping to 31 FPS, so losing to the 3060 by a significant margin. In Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p, the 6600 performs poorly at ultra settings, again losing to the 3060 by a decent margin. 
margin. Of course, you can always lower settings to get a playable experience out of these GPUs, at least at 1080p. At 1440p, we enter slideshow territory with the 6600 at a measly 28 FPS. The bandwidth cap here really limits the card, and lowering settings didn't improve things much. And our final game is Borderlands 3, where the 6600 and 3060 are pretty much tied at 1080p, with a slight edge for the AMD GPU. At 1440p, the 3060 jumps ahead by 5 frames on average, again the 6600 showing its bandwidth limitations. If we aggregate results from the 17 games I tested, including Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the 6600 is 2% faster than the 3060 on average, but if we remove Valhalla from the aggregate results, the 3060 is actually 14% faster than the 6600. Considering they have the same MSRP, it doesn't look good for the 6600. Overall, I'd say the cards are evenly matched with a few outliers here and there, depending on who's sponsoring who, but the Nvidia card seems to take the lead more often. Of course, MSRPs don't mean much these days, and if we look at the street price for the 3060, the cheapest I could find on Newegg.com was the Asus Jewel at 696 US dollars, which is a 111% increase over MSRP. So obviously if you are desperately in need of a GPU, to the point of being willing to pay this much for what is effectively an entry-level GPU, then the 6600 could be a good deal if you find it for significantly less. Considering the 6600 XT is currently also selling for around 700 US dollars, I think it's likely that the 6600 non-XT will have a street price of around 650 dollars, so 50 dollars cheaper than the 3060, delivering similar performance at 1080p. If you find the 6600 at say 600 dollars, then I guess that's a pretty good deal in the current market if you are desperate for a GPU and can't wait. My advice would be to only buy the 6600 if you can get it on AMD.com today, as there should be a few at MSRP, as it's going to be a good performer for 1080p and even 1440p in many cases for 329 dollars. If you can't get one from AMD.com, then my advice would be to just buy the 6600 XT instead if you are willing to pay the current ridiculous street prices, that is. Honestly, even if MSRPs were equivalent to street prices and you could find a 6600 for $329, I'd say the 6600 is still a very lackluster card, and I think AMD can do better when it comes to value for the money. At 299 MSRP, I think the con would be okay, not great, but passable. But at the same recommended price as the RTX 3060, I think it's a very underwhelming product. Now before I go, there's an article on Cortex.tech where I look at the excellent FSR implementation on Far Cry 6, which I recommend you check out. It's a good example of how today we need to look at GPUs in a different light, especially when it comes to performance at higher resolutions. Also, I will have my part 3 of my 2022 analysis ready very soon, so be sure you're subscribed and have the notifications on. Thanks to AMD and Sapphire for providing this review sample, and a big thank you to my patrons for their continued support. You can join my Patreon today for just $1 per month and get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server, where I often share exclusive information and my thoughts on current news and rumors. So join my Patreon today. Thanks for watching, and until the next one.